House bill fails the working class. We just uh, we just saw another uh, bill coming up for um, that that uh, passed through the House. Uh, that uh, that Nancy Pelosi, the Democratic crypt keeper, uh, she helped kind of put together, and uh, lo and behold, it is not only an insult to the to the name of the bill itself. Uh, but I think it also fails the working class pretty, uh, pretty intensely. Like it, it is an abysmal failure to the working class people. Um, it's called the Heroes Act. And, uh, so let's look at what this Heroes Act says and, uh, some of the bigger problems that I have with it. So, uh, first of all, it's $3 trillion. It, it passed the house on Friday and the claim right now is that it might not pass the Republican controlled Senate, uh, because it's too liberal when it's really not like, this is not a fucking liberal or progressive bill in the fucking least, like no, not even fucking close, not even fucking close. Uh, so what does it have? It has another $1,200 stimulus check, which is a stopgap measure at best. It's just like the last $1,200 check, right? Just like the last $1,200 check, uh, it doesn't really take care of the income inequality issue. Uh, it didn't do that in April. It's not going to do that in May. And it's not going to do that in June and July when they're going to have to fucking reassess this shit again. And you can't have fucking the U.S. Treasury Department Steve Mnuchin come out and be like, well, that's supposed to last you, uh, you know, uh, 10 weeks as as uh, $1,200 does. That's, that's just what, you know how like bread's a nickel. Yeah, in 1922 maybe. How does the guy that works for the House Treasury, the, the U.S. Department of Treasury, not understand how inflation works. Like, that's crazy. A comedian understands how inflation works better than the fucking politician does. That's fucking sad. <laughs> so uh, they have an extension of unemployment benefits, uh, and it goes to $600 per week all the way up to January 31st, 2021, which is another stopgap measure, right? It's another stopgap measure into the great millennial depression that's about to come. Like, we're on our way to another Great Depression and all the Democrats are writing into bills are fucking stopgap measures. That's it. More SNAP money. Uh, this should have been guaranteed to everybody so that nobody goes hungry. Like, you should just have a couple hundred bucks in, uh, in SNAP benefits that come to you every single month. That should just be a guaranteed. Everybody could have gotten a little card or they could have gotten a direct payment to their account, whatever. Uh, didn't do that. Didn't think about it. They were just like, people will figure it out. Maybe they'll eat the cardboard. I don't really know. That's their attitude. Uh, 12 month moratorium on evictions and mortgage forbearance. Uh, no rent or mortgage or debt cancellation, which means that more people will go into further debt. All this is doing is moving that that uh, uh, debt time clock down a little bit. That's all it's doing. It's not getting rid of the debt. It's not getting rid of anything. Um, you're going to see more foreclosures, more people go homeless. You're going to see 2008 repeat itself again. Uh, and we're basically setting the stage for another housing crisis by not canceling and uh, uh, freezing the rents and the mortgages and the debts. The banks are fine. They got $5 trillion. They got five. They're good. They're fine. What do they need our money to continue for? They don't. How does that make any sense? That they got a bailed out by the government, but we still have to make payments to them. We still have to help out the banks after the government helped out the banks. <laughs> Why are they getting double help? What do they do to get double help? Then there was $500 billion to states, um, which looks like it's about $10 billion per state. Um, $375 billion for local governments, $20 billion to tribes, and $20 billion to territories. I'm astounded that they even included the territories. Uh, now, if states and local were smart, they would take this money and implement direct payments to each of their citizens 
which would mean that on a very incredibly small scale, we'd be means testing universal basic income. And they can brag that trickle down finally worked, even though it didn't. It also includes uh, testing funds, but it doesn't say anything about making it free for everybody, uh, which means that lower income and middle class people will, um, will likely continue to spread the virus if they contract it. Uh, middle class and lower class people are who the essential workers actually are. They're the ones that are on the front line. They're the ones who this bill was written for, and there's no provision to get them free testing. Just that maybe we'll fund it. We'll fund we'll we'll fund the general idea of it, and then when it comes to delivering these tests, you know, you fucking plebes can figure out what you what you want to do with it. That's how Nancy Pelosi wrote this fucking bill. Twenty five billion dollars for the U.S. Postal Service. Nothing about hazard pay or better treatment for postal workers. Nothing about cleaning strategies of the post ser postal service itself. Um, you know. Uh, so these are all kind of half measures. These are all platitude measures that don't really say much of anything. Uh, and it's no different than what was put out. Uh, well, there's one or two differences. Um, I think you don't need a social security number anymore. You can just work with a tax ID number if that's what it is. But it's like, there's no, you know, virtually no difference. You took like, you, you inched forward is all you did with this bill when we needed a dynamic fucking leap forward we needed to go warp speed forward from april and you decided to go eh. that's it here's the big thing i ranted about this the other day uh and, and a good a good buddy of mine was was uh, a little concerned about it but uh you know um there's no ubi or paycheck guarantees uh, Nancy Pelosi refuses to call it UBI, refuses to call it UBI. Uh, she got very offended when somebody was like, I'm not, I'm not fucking saying UBI. That's crazy. That's not, that's socialism. I can't, if I, if I say uh, UBI, uh, fucking Lenin will pop out of my chest and uh, destroy America. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't have that. That's, that's crazy. So she uh, she didn't do it. Permila Jayapal basically was calling for paycheck, what she calls paycheck guarantee plans. It's basically a direct cash payment every single month. It's $2,000 direct cash payments every single month to every adult in America, um, regardless of your taxes and so on and so forth. This is the fifth time something like this has been proposed, and it's the fifth time that Nancy Pelosi and the House Democrats fucking knocked it off the table, didn't even consider it, didn't even look at it. Tulsi Gabbard brought it up. Bernie Sanders brought it up. Ro Khanna's brought it up. Now um, Kamala Harris is talking about it. Um, there's a couple other like corporate Democrats that have been talking about it. All of these people started jumping on board because they were like, "Hey, I don't think there's like another way to do this, and I'm trying to get votes." Like, <laughs> like I get that this is a vote measure. That's all it is. It's a neoliberal vote measure. They don't really give a shit. Like fundamentally, they've spoken out against this because they're getting their pockets flooded by the prison industrial complex and the fucking uh, insurance lobbies and all this shit. Like they don't actually give a fuck about universal basic income. But if they don't give universal basic income, they might lose their fucking votes. See, so Nancy Pelosi declined it. Uh, she said that it has merit, but she won't consider it because maybe Republicans would knock it down. Which is like, yeah, no shit. Like, Republicans don't care about this shit. They care about uh, working hard. And even though you can't get a job, you got to go get a job. And you got to get that working class ethic going. That's what makes America great, baby. Wage slavery makes America great again, baby. That's what does it. You know, and it's just like, where, who's get, where are we going to go get jobs from? That's fucking, there, there's, there are no jobs to be had right now. Um, she, she compromised on behalf of the Republicans by not considering this measure. Permila Jaipal is it, out of the progressive, Congressional Progressive Caucus or whatever the fuck it is. Um, the CPC or whatever it is called. There's all these names for all these things that I can't keep up with. Uh, Permila Jaipal is the only one that didn't vote for this fucking bill. 
AOC voted for it, Ilhan Omar voted for it, Rashid Tlaib voted for it, even though it has none of the things that the that the Progressive Caucus actually wanted. They didn't they, they didn't push back hard enough because the Democratic Party doesn't legislate on behalf of the people. They legislate on behalf of corporations and bending the knee to fucking Republicans. That's what they do. They're like, oh, but the Republicans might say no. It's like, yeah, the Republicans might fucking say no. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to figure out a way to convince them? Isn't that your fucking job is to try to convince these people that they should probably vote on this shit, that this is beneficial, especially if they want to get reelected. Maybe they should fucking vote uh, on a bill that actually helps the people that put them in power in the first place. I doubt very much that she, this, this, is, this is not really going to be a surprise statement. But Nancy Pelosi doesn't give a shit about progressivism. <laughs> like, she just fucking doesn't. She's a guy, she's a goddamn millionaire trying to make legislation for a bunch of poor people. Like, that's not like a thing that happens, you know? Like, but like, we're gonna talk about that. Uh, we're gonna talk about her a little later. Um, this notion, though, of like, you know, you gotta find compromises. That's what they always say, right? Like, Oh, we can't do these progressive things because there's no compromise in it. It's too it's too aggressive. It's too uh, you know, it's too radical. It's too this, it's too that. And they got to compromise in Congress. They always compromise on behalf of the banks and not in, on behalf of the people, right? We we are the ones that they compromise. We get compromised so that the banks get bailed out. Nobody talked about the fact that they needed to come up with a compromise when they were like, hey, maybe we should give trillions of dollars to the financial sector for virtually no fucking reason. Maybe we should bail out corporations. There's no there's no compromise there. You know, there's no compromise when it comes to running coups in other countries or blowing up brown people. Don't nope, don't worry about that. You need to compromise there. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to fucking do it. Everybody votes in, uh, exactly the same way is is. Yes to bailing out the banks. Yes to coups in other countries we don't like. Yes to blowing up brown countries. Democrats, Republicans, they all fucking do it. This might be a harsh statement, and I don't know who needs to hear it. And maybe the people that hear it are going to call me an asshole for saying it because they might be the any blue types. Uh, but if you think that the Democrats will ever legislate on behalf of the working class, or they are the good guys in this situation, you have been duped by congressional con men. You have been duped by congressional con artists. That's what's happened. They've run a grift on you, and you fucking fell for it. And we all have fallen for it. I fell for it when I first got into politics, right? When I was, a young, when I was like younger, but you, you know, in my teens, I thought the Democrats were the good guys. And the older that I get, I'm just like, this is the one party system pretending to have two parties. Like, that's all it is. It's the party of money. It's the party of corporations. It's the party of the almighty dollar. That's all it is. And it just has two different heads. One is, is slightly bluer and one is slightly redder. That's it. They are congressional con artists and they use these platitudes to suck you in and say all these nice things, and then they legislate the way they're legislating now, where, the, where the, the, the logical thing to do, the compassionate thing to do, the right thing to do, is to have a recurring payment for Americans that are struggling in this country. And Nancy Pelosi is like, no, I can't do it because I have to bend the knee to Republicans. The Republicans might say no. Yeah, so what? Fucking fight for it. That's why you're in office. And she doesn't. Because she's not a, she's not for the working class people. She's secretly a fucking Republican. That's what she is. All of the Democrats are. There's only one party, folks. And this is an example of that. <sighs> They've had five chances to directly help the working class people in this country. Like I mentioned, five different times this, this notion of UBI has shown up. Five fucking different times. And they bailed on it each time. They bailed on it every single time. They enrich themselves just like the Republicans do. That's what they care about. Stop championing these people. Stop coming out and being like, oh my God, Nancy Pelosi is so bold. 
Oh my God, she said all of these things. Oh my God, no, Nancy Pelosi does not fucking fight for you. She fights to make herself an, a, another million dollars so she can become a multimillionaire. That's what Nancy Pelosi is interested in. She's interested in corporate fucking um, corporate bailouts. That's all she cares about. Stop championing exploitation. Stop championing these people that want to exploit you for their votes to keep Nancy Pelosi in office. That's all she that's why she says those nice things. Not once has she followed through on those nice things. And I'll prove that shit in a bit. <laughs> Stay tuned, folks. <laughs> Stay tuned for uh uh for, for 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 later in the episode how Nancy Pelosi fucked the working class. <laughs> Uh, the other, the other major thing that uh, uh, was sort of uh, uh, a slap in the face to the working class people in this new stimulus bill, stimulus bill, if you even fucking want to call it that, uh, is Cobra subsidies to protect health insurance companies who are turning a profit right now. They're making money. They've all come out and just been like, "Yeah, we're not, we're fine. We don't, we're not even concerned that this is going to affect us." By the way, like we're. I'm in a bathtub made of money right now. Like not filled with money. Like I have so much money that I constructed a bathtub out of money and then I filled it with money. That's how much money I'm making right now. Like it's, this is, this is not even that big of a deal. Like my boner is just a, a roll of hundreds. I don't even have a penis anymore. It's just like a roll of hundreds is what, like that's how rich I am. I replaced my penis with cash. Like, they're not worried about it. <laughs> they're just not fucking worried about it. Here's why they did that, though. Um, so with the larger number of unemployed people, more people might end up going on Medicare or Medicaid, which means that more of the budget will be allocated to Medicare or Medicaid to support the people that are on these programs. Uh, which means less money for private insurance companies. Uh, and th they thrive on people having employment because people's employment is how people get health insurance with these private insurance companies. Em Employer-connected health care is basically how you are a slave to your job. Uh, and, and corporations in tandem with the health insurance companies and the pharmaceutical companies uh, are holding you hostage for little to no pay. Uh, and then they get to treat you like shit because it, it, because you're like, well, you want that health care, don't you? Don't you want that health care, baby? Huh? I want I want to keep you healthy. Oh, you got to stay with me. I know I don't pay you very much. I know I abuse the shit out of you. I know I make you work late. I know you haven't seen your kids in forever, but you want to stay healthy, don't you, baby? I love you. That's why I want to give you health care that comes directly out of your, your paycheck. This is how abusers behave. Subsidizing COBRA, it, it basically forces people um, to, to go to these private health insurance companies. Uh, and it basically forces people that people don't get Medicare. So it, it essentially is the legislative equivalent of fucking like, this is how they legislatively fuck Medicare, like the notions of Medicare for all to, to basically be like, well, see, see, it doesn't work. We knew that it was going to not going to work here. This is proof that it doesn't. But here's the thing. If you funded Medicare, Medic Medicaid and Medicare the same way you fund these subsidies, the same way that you bail out private insurance companies, I bet it would succeed too. I bet you that it would fucking succeed. Before we get into this next part, let's look at some comments. Marky V, Marky Viola. He's the uh, comedian that I talked about earlier in the show. Uh, I showed up for Yes Blowing Up Brown Countries, and I'm already on board. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Mark, have you... <laughs> I have a, 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 a fun company that you could work for. I don't know if you've heard of them. They're a small little company called the CI... Am I saying this right? A? CIA, I think they're called. <laughs> Stop making healthcare sound like my ex. It's It's not healthcare. It's private healthcare. It's uh, it's healthcare connected to your employment healthcare. It's how corporate healthcare works. Uh, and I'm I'm sorry. 
uh, and I hope you're okay. Uh, it's going to be fine. Uh, remember, uh, you don't have health care to get a therapist. Uh, anyway, uh, so... <laughs> Uh, as we continue down, uh, this is the part where I'm going to talk to you about how Nancy Pelosi has fucked the working class. As promised, folks. As promised. Um, so, uh, Nancy Pelosi made a speech. I watched this 20-minute fucking speech that she made um, about the Heroes Act and and how this 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 is really for the heroes, our essential workers, those frontline men and women that are putting their lives at risk for us. And look at the pittance that I'm giving them, and and I'm I'm posturing and making myself look good. Doesn't this? I have I'm wearing a blazer and a and a matching mask uh, that I that I purchased from Amazon because Amazon lines my pockets. Um, you know, that's that's the way that uh, fucking Nancy Pelosi acts. So she claims that the HEROES Act will be a tremendous help for our he heroes. Uh, and virtually it's the same corporate bailout as the fucking April bill, right? And it hands pittances to the middle class. One pay one check of twelve hundred dollars. Well, maybe we'll extend the unemployment um out to 2021, but we'll still make the whole system super fucking complicated and super fucked up. Uh, and uh, we're not even sure if we're going to be able to send out all, all these checks or make any of these direct payments, uh, just like the last time. <laughs> but she cares, guys. It's going to make a tremendous impact on the working class. And I think by, by tremendous impact, I think she means that she's going to crush the working class by using this piece of legislation designed to look like she's trying to help. Uh, not one point in this 20 minute speech does she mention any of the essential worker strikes, walkouts, sick outs that are happening all across the country. She never mentions any of their demands and uh, the Democrats are basically doing nothing to meet said demands. This piece of legislation doesn't meet their demands. It's just kind of fluff. Uh, doesn't measure any of it. She doesn't talk to regular people. I, like, I don't think she's ever talked to regular people to begin with. She talks to lobbyists. She talks to the business sector. Uh, she ignores what people want. And she claims she's doing this for them. She claims that this is for the people. People need this. I'm doing this because I love them. She mentions the uh, 36 million dollar, uh, sorry, 36 million people, uh, 36 million plus, there's more than 36 million people uh, that are on unemployment and it's unimaginable, which basically translates to, boy, I really thought that we could uh, con you guys into wage slavery for like another decade or so, but then this fucking virus happened and it's like, oh man, what a bummer to all of our plans of corporate authoritarianism. Like, this fucking sucks for us, guys. This is really fucked up. I mean, what this virus is doing is really fucked up. So now we got to go to, like, plan B, where we kind of give you, like, some pittance, and then maybe when this virus is over, then we can shove you guys back into, into wage slavery, and you can worship me like your Yoss queen. Then she goes on to say, well, I have empathy for the workers over this stress that they must be facing. Yet yeah, she does dick all. She fucking does dick all to legislate on their behalf. Like she does nothing to legislate on their behalf. No Medicare for all, no rent or debt cancellation, no UBI, no corporate transparency, no worker protections, no increase in hazard pay, no guaranteed sick leave, none of it. She's got nothing in there. She says she's got a plan to succeed and put more money in the pockets of the American people, especially the ones that are essential. And she denied all that shit to play politics. She uses speeches like this to basically pull tug at the heartstrings of the American working class and not do anything for them. That's how she operates. The Fed has told her to think big and act for the people, and she has thought big. She thought, thought big for the private insurance companies, and her own pockets, and how this COBRA subsidy is going to line her pockets, and she's going to get rich. At one point, she starts talking about the uh, 
history of the past few months and how proud she is of the bipartisanship that they have faced in this country. Oh, she's so proud, you guys. She's so proud of it. March 4th, she talks about testing, that they put forward this note, uh, idea for testing. And then she goes, quote, I'm not fulfilled, but hey, at least we got that bipartisanship down, right? We fucking nailed it on that bipartisanship front. We got it. We, 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 we sure as shit didn't stop any of the corporations from uh, coming in with their money and interests and making sure that testing was a lot harder to do in the United States and people can't even afford to get tested unless they're a bunch of rich people. Uh, but boy, it looked good for a photo op of all of us kind of shaking hands and looking, looking at the camera with our thumbs up like we did a good job. We made friends. March 14th, masks, 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 she says. Uh, PPE, not fully realized. But, you know, y come on, guys. Remember those photo ops we took? We nailed it on those photo ops. Everybody looked so good. We didn't even look decrepit. They didn't, they didn't make any of this stuff happen. They legislated for it, and people still can't afford tests. There still isn't enough testing kits out there because these corporations have moneyed interests. There's, there's PPE didn't come through the same way because fucking um, big corporations <laughs> used a loophole to get in the way. They're not manufacturing masks or ventilators or any of this stuff. They're not um, doing any of that shit. And where are they? Where are they enforcing that? But we should all celebrate them for the fact that, oh, they shook hands across the aisle. They did a nice thing for a photo. Then she goes to March 28th, CARES Act. Republican leadership in the Senate came up with the CARES Act, and then it became an interim PPE bill. And then they negotiated, um, and basically they negotiated to give us plebes a pittance so we would shut the fuck up. Now we, the Dems, oh, we're, we're suggesting the same thing now. We're, we're suggesting 80%, you know, and, and it's basically the same thing that the Republicans were saying back in April. And we should be proud of this. This is amazing, you guys. The Republicans and Democrats finally agreed to basically not do dick all for the working class people. They voted bipartisanly and enforced ignorantly. They didn't make any of this shit come through. People still haven't received their $1,200 checks that they said that they were going to get. There's still people f unsure about what to do for unemployment. And Nancy Pelosi is claiming that she's proud of this. There's an OSHA mandate that they apparently put out uh, as part of this bill. And even if that comes through, what are they going to do to actually make sure that it happens? They have failed in everything. Testing, not fulfilled. Mask, not realized. Mask and PPE is not realized. And you expect this bill to be something that we're going to champion and celebrate? When these meager little things that you have legislated for, you can't even make sure it comes to fruition? At one point in the speech, she comes out and she says, these are the American people. These are our families. Holy shit. <clears throat> if this is how she treats family, boy, howdy, I do not want to be part of her family, right? Like, don't, don't ask her to come help you move or anything, you guys. Like, don't, don't have her come, come over and help you move because she'll, she'll filibuster for a, a couple hours and then she'll give your money, she'll give more money to your landlord to throw a pizza party while you move all your stuff in by yourself. Then she goes, this is not a Christmas tree. Yeah, no shit, this is not a Christmas tree. Usually on Christmas, we get the things that we want. We get presents that we're excited about. Not bullshit half measures that aren't even going to be enforced in the first place. 
She goes, this is a tailored plan to meet the needs of the American people. According to whom? These are not the needs that we asked for. We didn't ask for COBRA subsidies or one payment of $1,200. We didn't ask for handouts to corporations. We didn't, we didn't, didn't say don't enforce the OSHA laws. You legislate and don't enforce. We didn't ask for that either. We have to think about the costs now is, is something that she talks about. Oh, we have to think about the costs and the opportunities lost. Yeah, and, and she's right. She has lost it. Nancy Pelosi has lost a, uh, a major opportunity to unequivocally prove that she fights for the working class because she doesn't. She threw away major portions, major ideas uh, that were put forward by a progressive caucus, and she threw it away because the Republicans might say something mean about it. She's not on the side of the working class. She's a fucking millionaire. She doesn't know what people, average working class people go through. She only meets with the business sector. That's all she gives a shit about. While I was watching that speech... So it's a 20 minute speech. You can look it up. It's on, it's on the Hills YouTube page. She was kind of stumbling. Um, and, and it sounded like she was having a really hard time. Um, nothing as bad as Joe Biden, by the way. Uh, not as, not as bad as old Joe. Old Joe is, is having a rough go of it. And I don't think Nancy's too far behind. She couldn't really like finish a whole sentence. And she was doing like the same thing as like when, you know, when you have like a fourth grader that's reading a book report like these, uh, sometimes you have to help the essential workers and the essential workers are important and nice. Look up at camera. Like that's like, that's kind of how she was reading her speech. It was, it sounded really disingenuous. And I think it's done on purpose. I, I think she's disingenuous, um, on purpose. Um, because I think she's a disingenuous individual. I think she's in to line her own pockets. And she had a really hard time with that speech. She's stumbling and she's staggering over these words. Probably because her brain wants to say the truth. Hey, if we give the plebes a little bit more cash, maybe they'll shut the fuck up and go away. And then we can start lining our pockets and using this pandemic as an opportunistic way to become richer. But she has to make it sound like these essential workers are the heroes. They're on the front lines and deserve our respect. And that statement is true, but it's not acted upon. And it's said disingenuously by Nancy Pelosi. The only time she said something stern to the point, matter of frank, confidently, was when she told Jake Tapper, calm down. When Jake Tapper asked her, what are these states and local governments going to do to 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 help the the citizens of their cities and states face this global pandemic? She goes, "Calm down, you'll get your money. Shut the fuck up, Jake." Confident, no stumbling, on point, on message. That's her message to the American people. Calm down. We'll get you your money when we get you your money. That's the way, that's who Nancy Pelosi is. This bill is an utter failure. And until, um, until they figure out how to, how to economically, you know, take care of the American people, um, there, there will be more bills that will be more failures. You have a Republicans that are coming out and realizing that the way forward is a UBI plan. You might not want to call it a UBI because you're scared of the socialism word, but that is going to have to be, um, that is, that is probably going to have to be the feature for it. We're seeing worker strikes all across the country from, uh, sanitation workers in New Orleans and Pittsburgh, McDonald's workers, Costco employees, Amazon, empl the Amazon strikes are starting to get, get bigger. 
So Instacart, Target, Shipt, all these companies, all these workers are going on strike. They're going on strike <laughs> because people like Nancy Pelosi are not legislating on their behalf. They're going on strike because they're in unsafe working conditions. They're not getting paid enough. Their life is on the line. They're losing their health care. And every single way that this country is operated as the norm it doesn't, it doesn't work anymore. The norm has failed us several different times and is going to continue to fail us going forward. So we need to think differently. The most... The Fed saying think big, yeah, think radical. Don't I don't think that's what the Fed meant, by the way. I don't think I don't think the chairman of the Fed was like, make maybe you should make some radical changes. Maybe you should do something more progressive. Do you think do you think you should give like five trillion dollars to the American people through like monthly payments and stuff? Is that something you know how we just kind of like make up money out of thin air? Do you think we should do that to the American people? Like I'm not saying that. To them, think big was COBRA subsidies, more taxation type things, unemployment benefits, all the shit that didn't work in April. Let's do it again. This bill is a failure and the Democrats continue to fail. Purple Jaipal didn't vote for this bill. She um, she pushed back against Nancy Pelosi a little bit, um, which is which is finally nice to see, like the progressive wing pushing back against this neoliberal class of uh, Democrats in Congress. It's nice to see that a little bit, um, but uh, you know we need to see more of it. To be honest, AOC needs to be standing up, but she's kind of bent the knee. Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, all these people. They fucking bent the knee. They're just like, yeah, we'll just vote for whatever whatever Queen Nance tells us to do. That's not progressive. That's not on the side of the working class. There's a populist wave in, in, the, in the ranks of the proletariat, and they are straight up fucking ignoring it. They are ignoring it. And that's why we're seeing strikes. That's why I I've, I've spent a whole fucking month and a half talking about strikes on, the, on these shows, on these live streams, of why they happen what what was successful about them, what didn't succeed, what we can learn from them. We've seen more wildcat strikes in the last two months than we have in a long time. And there's a reason. It's because this neoliberal, for-profit, winner-take-all capitalist system is not fucking working. And it will not work if we keep doing the same shit over and over again. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this clip. If you enjoyed this clip, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button, you hit the like button, make sure that you share this content out. Usually content like this, this anti-establishment comedy content is not uh, shown to as many people uh, as it possibly could be. It does get suppressed quite often, so uh, if you can hit that share button, get the word out there. Uh, and tell folks that you enjoyed this video. And if you want to be a part of a live virtual comedy show, the next live virtual comedy show, the next Citizen Revolution comedy show is going to be on May 22nd. Uh, tickets are available for that right now, and then they'll be um, they'll be happening every Friday uh, at 9 p.m. So tickets are available for these shows at krishmohan.com. That's K-R-I-S-H. M O H A N dot com. And you got to get your tickets uh, because that's how I'm going to be able to send you the Zoom login information so you can attend the show and we don't get any unwanted visitors in the Zoom show. So, like I said, the next one is on May 22nd. Grab your tickets and we'll see you there. Thanks again and we'll see you soon.